February 9th. Dear Sal, Yesterday, while I was hiding out from all this damn California sunshine, I dug out our old marriage certificate. I thought I'd have it bronzed and sent to you for your birthday. Then I saw your birth date on it. Welcome to your 50s, baby. Love, Jake. Thursday the 12th. Dear Jake, you son of a bitch. I will not be anywhere remotely near 50. I will be 46. I ought to know, after all, I've been 46 several times now. So I don't give a rat's ass what the marriage certificate says. Incidentally, my darling, what are you doing holding on to that old thing? We had it revoked years ago, you know. I still love you as always. Nicole Kidman told me she had lunch with you and the new missus the other day in old LA. Nicole says she was quite a knockout, despite the teeny cross-eyedness. Is that a word? Excuse the bitchiness, but ex-wives are allowed, especially when ex-husbands marry girls young enough to be my uh, sister, you rat. Heidi? Is her name really Heidi? Does she have braids? How is she at milking goats? I love you a lot. You groom you. Your gal, Sal. P.S. Bell says congratulations on the wedding and better luck this time. Sal, listen, at midnight, go into the bathroom, lock the door, and turn on all the faucets full blast and wish yourself a secret happy birthday from me. Then look in the shower stall. A little present from your secretary. Happy 46th. Now there's a real present. Val. February 17th. Dear Miss Ross, I couldn't possibly let your birthday go by without wishing you an Oscar slash Tony slash Emmy winning day. You are the greatest star in the firmament and your birthday should be a national holiday with schools letting out and cheering in the streets. Your greatest fan. Douglas Breen, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. Monday the 26th. Dear Jake. Oh, Jake, darling, what a day. I wouldn't let up on Belle until I made her cry. Why does she put up with me? Why doesn't she get a job in a nut house where people are easier to get along with? What a pair we are. Having spat my venom at Belle, I went over to the Algonquin to meet Gideon Riggs, the choreographer for my new show entitled, So I Bit Him. Just a little get acquainted lunch. Nothing could possibly go wrong, right? After an hour or two of toying with the shrimp, I realized that my attitude, as well as my disposition, was ruined. Or rather, two shrimps. Mr. Riggs, it turns out, is all of one foot tall, give or take an inch. I'm sure they found him under a toadstool. I'm to do an entire number comprised of, are you sitting? Cartwheels, Cartwheels and, and splits. splits. You heard correctly. M me. Cartwheels and splits. I explained to the munchkin that I don't do cartwheels and only stocks split these days. He explained to me there was nothing to it. Inside of two days, he'd have me looking like an Olympic gymnast. Think of it, Jake. Me on a freaking balance beam? I love you, but it sure doesn't solve my problems. Your gal, Sal. March 1st. Dear Sally, something really awful happened. I was late for work the other morning and I had to dash. Well, to make an endless story short, I forgot to unplug my toaster, which is the old fashioned kind, and I had a small fire. Now, there's nothing to worry about. Luckily, only a few odds and ends were ruined. But alas and alack, the autograph photo you sent me was among them. So here I sit among the charred ruins with a broken heart. I know how expensive those glossies are, but I'd give my eye teeth for a replacement. Is there any chance? I'd gladly reimburse you for the cost. Your greatest fan, <laughs> Douglas Breen, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. 
Dear Sal, knock it off. You're as gorgeous as you ever were and you know it. So stop looking for compliments. Like the man says, you're not getting older, just better. And stop feeling sorry for yourself. You've got everything a woman could want, including all my love, Jake. Dear Mr. Breen, Miss Ross wanted me to tell you how sorry she is about your fire. Luckily, nothing more important than her picture burned up. Enclosed, find another. Any member of Miss Ross's fan club is entitled to seconds. Belle Goldman, secretary to Miss Ross. March 8th. Dear Miss Goldman, I couldn't possibly allow your very snide letter to go unanswered. You may feel that because you have the good fortune to be Sally Ross's secretary, that allows you to be offhand with people, but it certainly does not. Moreover, your reference to Sally's picture as unimportant is, I think, a breach of loyalty. Anyone as wonderful as Sally is entitled to only the purest devotion from her employees, or would it be fair turn to say, servants. Douglas Breen, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. Yeah. So, you split the seam in the seat of your black pantsuit again? If you're looking for your snack tonight, try the vegetable crisper. I'm taking Sarah Lee home with me. We're beginning to spend a little too much money on needles and thread around here. Oh, I took your advice and I didn't answer the creep. Bell. Bell. Ha ha. Only you forgot about the Nestle's chocolate bits in the pantry. Fatso. March 20th. Dear Sally, just a note to inquire as to whether you had that little talk with your secretary yet. Sally, I know what a loving person you are, but sometimes it is a mistake to be too soft with the subordinate. They take dreadful, dreadful advantage. Have a little talk with your secretary. You owe it to yourself and to those who love you, as I do. Your greatest fan, Douglas Breen, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. Dear Sal, good work. You found me, but I'm hiding in the back of the cupboard because I have 4 billion calories in me and I'm for the guests Friday night. Not for you. Belle said, if you eat me, the next role you'll be offered is the lead in the life story of the Goodyear blimp. She said, you should eat my friend the carrot or she'll break your thumb. Your former friend, the giant Kit Kat bar. Dear Sal, I've got a few minutes between conferences and it was either take a walk around the lot now that we've got a cloudy day or write my favorite ex. You won. Everything is fine at home these days. Heidi's taking a class in gourmet cookery. And I think my ulcer's back in town. Love, Jake. Dear Sally, you really must take some time from your busy schedule to drop me a line. As always, Douglas Breen, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. Dear Belle, welcome to the refrigerator. I am a grapefruit. You may eat me. I'm also the exact shape of your ass, so watch who you leave notes to. In case you haven't passed a mirror recently, you ain't no Audrey Hepburn yourself. The ghost of your former figure. Friday the 28th. Darling Jake. Are you or are you not drinking milk before meals like you're supposed to, dummy? I finally convinced Riggs that cartwheels and splits are inappropriate for a 102-year-old woman. So now I spin. That's right, I come out spitting like a top. God forbid I should walk down stage like a normal person. What is that midget trying to do, kill me? I ask you, Jake, do you wanna see some old bag and feather spin around like a demented parrot? Whatever happened to glamour? 
Are you sure Meryl Streep started this way? Your gal, Sal. P.S. Milk. Dear Sally, what an incorrigible correspondent you are. Just kidding, Sally. But ages have gone by since I asked for a letter from you. I read in the post that your new musical, So I Bit Him, looks like a surefire hit. How could it not be with you as the lead? I would love to hear from you. Take a moment out for me, the one who adores you, Douglas, 780 West 71st Street, New York City. Dear Mr. Breen, I'm sorry, but Miss Ross's schedule at the moment does not permit her to answer fan mail in person. I am sure you can understand that she is very busy and cannot answer every fan letter personally. Bell Goldman, personal secretary to Sally Ross. April 7th, dear Sally. Again, the intervention of your secretary? Sally, clearly your little talk with her did no good and a threat of dismissal would, would be, be more appropriate. She flaunts me with snide references to fan clubs and fan letters. Yes, Sally, I am certainly your greatest fan, but I'm much more than that. I'm a friend, someone who will always be there for you in any way you want me. I mean that, Sally. I can be your closest friend, your confidant, and yes, even so desired, even your lover. It has taken me a long time to say this, but it's true, Sally. And believe me, I have all the necessary equipment to make you happy both in mind and body. More love than I can say, Douglas, 780 West 71st Street. Dear Mr. Breen, all right, enough's enough. I haven't bothered Miss Ross with your letters, but now you're getting out of hand. No one here is interested in your equipment and the postal authorities frown on that kind of offer going through the mail. So just suppose you quit writing, Belle Goldman. April 13th, dear Sal, I took a poll at the commissary over lunch. Tom Hanks, Dustin Hoffman, and Judy Dench all voted yes. They would love to see you spinning around in feathers. So be a good girl and do what you're told. Love, Jake. Sally, things are worse than I feared. I don't mean to frighten you, but you must be armed with the truth so that you will know what you are up against. I decided not to mail my latest letter, but bring it to the theater personally over my lunch hour to make absolutely sure it did not go astray, as I fear so many of my letters to you have in the past. I went to the stage entrance and let myself in. A woman, middle-aged in a suit of nondescript and unfashionable style, came in the side stage door behind me and curtly brushed past me. She went up to the man seated at the desk, and they chatted for a moment, and he addressed her as Belle. I watched and listened, and then it happened, Sally. He handed her mail intended for your eyes alone. Do you understand the full implications of that? Whatever her plan of action against you, she is not in it alone. I left the theater quickly, shaken to the core. Sally, my dear, I dare not send my letters to you, lest they find out the extent of our knowledge of their nefarious activities. But Sally, I will continue to write. I will not forsake you. Somehow you must know that my thoughts continue to win your way, although for the moment I will keep these letters in trust to you. Trust me. I will be near. Douglas. Sunday the 18th, Angel Jake. <laughs> Darling, I need advice. I consider dear Abby, but when I remembered there you are, sitting behind your desk at Continental with nothing better to do than listen to the problems of your Auntie Mame. So here goes. I'll make a scenario of it so you'll feel right at home. Fade in, gorgeous star early 40s. Listen, it's my scenario. Gorgeous Star sneaks out of a simply horrendous rehearsal with Grumpy. 
the Wonder Choreographer. Close up of the absolutely radiant but tired actress sitting in the coffee shop over a little bullion, staring out the window, wondering why she who has everything should feel, well, somewhat less than ecstatic about her life. Camera pans from ravishing actress to the back booth. Close up of absolutely handsome young man, giving actress the sweetest smile you ever saw. Oh, Jake, talk about your blue eyes, medium shot, breathtaking young man and stunning, slightly older woman are sitting at the same table, chatting amiably. Gorgeous young man is so interested in, so sensitive too, and so sympathetic with stunning, ever so slightly older woman. It could break your heart. What's happening to me, Jake? I was never the kind to have entanglements with young men, was I? But now I find myself thinking about him through rehearsal, just waiting to get back to that greasy spoon and bathe in those eyes. There's something strange about him. I know nothing about him, really. Who has a chance to talk with me around? But he smiles as if he has a secret. A beautiful, wonderful secret. Dear Sally, I told him I would see him there tomorrow. I have begun. Should I? Soon, my darling, all will be revealed to you and then you will know. Oh, please say yes, Jake. That you are not alone and at the mercy of foes. And be a little bit jealous, darling, for my sake. Love, YGS. You have me, Sally and all is in capable hands. Know only that you are safe and I am with you, closer than you think, Douglas. April 20th, dear Sal, of course, see him. If he makes you happy, I don't care if he's 14 and wears Clearasil. And what do you mean a little jealous? I know I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm a lot jealous. Are you happy now? Love, Jake. Dear Jake, I thought I would drop you a note since you know who was listening in on the little bit of a conversation we had when you called the other day. Things have been moving here at a swift pace. You asked about Sal's little friend? Well, he's a total schmuck. The other morning, he comes into the kitchen when I'm making Sal's coffee and he starts in. A touch of cinnamon in the coffee like P.R.E., just a suggestion, mind you. Maybe a little shredded chocolate like Switzerland. Or what about Anisette? For crying out loud, I'm trying to get the goddamn water to boil, open the mail and get her out in time. And Donnie Osmond is giving with the cook's tour. Lately, Sal's been some sweet and pain in the ass too. Much as I love her, I think maybe I ought to take an early vacation this year and leave her and lover boy alone to decide what kind of coffee they want. Why couldn't she just pick out a nice guy her own age? Someone with a head on his shoulders and a job that would get him out of here early. Speaking of which, she gives him money. I know I shouldn't tell you, but it burns me up and I can't keep my trap shut. Also, he goes through her papers. I caught him. He said it was all just so interesting he couldn't resist. Goddamn little snoop. What's he looking for? Loose change? I tell you, Jake, I hope I never get to the point where all I want out of life is a man. We miss you here a lot. You're, only, you're the only sanity Sal's ever had. Well, besides me. Love, Belle. Dear Jake. The last two days have been, how shall I put it, Armageddon. Belle has taken the most infuriating dislike to my young man, David. She said he's rude to her, but when I ask how, Belle says it's not what he says, it's the way he says it. Okay, Jake, 
Why is life never simple? Why can't Prince Charming come in the right size and shape and age? And why did we ever get divorced? Whatever I said, I take it back. Now that's done. Your marriage to Heidi is revoked. You are to get on the next plane and get back here. Enough. I'll have myself in tears soon. And everybody knows armored tanks can't cry. YGS. Dear Sally, I dare not send this letter to your home in case she gets her hands on it. Instead, I will send it to the theater. I will not sign my name nor my address just to be on the safe side. You know where to reach me. The same address you sent the photograph to. Douglas. Dear Jake, thank you, darling, for sitting up half the night with me on the phone. I was so worried about Belle and the attack. You're always there for me when I need you, aren't you? I love you for it. I hope Heidi understood. Dear Sally, now you know. And any thoughts you may have had about my sincerity, any doubts about my ability to protect you must now be gone, washed away by my tidal wave of love. Sal, there's no one in the world I would rather sit up all night with than you. I saw Belle this afternoon for a few minutes. Jake, half her face is wrapped in a bandage and she's so pale. She's being fed intravenously and there's a tube in her nose. When I first saw her, I almost cried. My poor darling Belle. But then as I sat there, she started to smile. <laughs> she even called me names when I did cry. There was never anyone like her. Are you? What have I ever done to deserve both of you? All my love. I just wish it could have been an up all night conversation for laughs and not because of poor Belle. Give her my best, would you? And stop wondering what you did to deserve us. It's simple. You loved us. Here for you always. Jake. It was all so delightfully simple. Those purveyors of popular entertainments would have one believe that a violent act is ugly and brutal. Such is simply not the case. It was beautiful, almost balletic, and it has the sensuous of its own, not unlike the act of love. It was about five o'clock when the woman rounded the corner and went into your building, laden with packages. I returned to my bench and my vigil. I didn't have to wait long. Several minutes after six, she came out and turned east at the corner. I followed at a safe distance. On Lexington Afternoon, uh, at Lexington Avenue, she went into the subway. I did likewise. The train came. I entered the same car at the opposite end. I stood with my back towards that woman, lest she see me, but in the reflection from the door where I stood, I could see her. She sat dozing her head occasionally nodding. For a brief moment, I, I almost felt sorry for her. <laughs> but then I remembered the peril she placed you in and all sorrow vanished. The train pulled out of Cro uh, Croatonas Park Station and the woman shook off the drowsiness and got up. She stood by the door at the end of the car. I waited at the other. And the next station, she got out, as did I. With the knife in my jacket pocket, my hand held tightly around it, I followed. Several others got off the train too, but Sally, oh, Sally, heaven was on our side. The woman chose to exit by means of the staircase at the end of the platform. Alone? I hurried alone behind her. Dear Jake, thank you for what you said on the phone this morning but you were wrong. I am responsible for what happened to Belle. I can't bear it, but it's true. I am so lucky to have her. 
and I've brought her such pain. I called her name, and as she turned, the knife sliced through the air and into her face. And again, it was as if it was happening in slow motion. The upraised knife slowly descending, her body lurching forward and falling as th through water. A ballet of right against wrong. When it was over, the calm and peace that follows an act of love descended on me. I went up into the street and I walked for blocks and blocks. I knew I had experienced an act of love such as few men have ever known. And all of it was for you, my dearest. I will be there soon, Sally. Douglas. To the entire cast and crew of So I Bit Him. Due to illness, Sally Ross will be unable to attend rehearsals for the next four or five days. The new opening for previews is May 19th. Check the revised rehearsal schedule for your calls. Dear Sally, still no reply from you? <laughs> what am I to think? Surely my Sally would not let so many days go by without a word to her own true love if there were not a good reason. Dear Sal, I'm writing this because every time I try to say it on the phone, you stop me. Surely my Sally would not be guilty of that kind of callousness. Terrible thoughts have crept into my mind. I am desperately ashamed to admit them. Doubts about you, my love. My star? Let me come to you, Sally. I know you don't need me, but I don't want you to go through this alone. If the police can't make you feel safe, I will. I know I can get you to smile that famous smile. I always could. There. Now I've said it without interruption. Love, Jake. A word, Sally, is all that I ask. No, I, I, I don't ask it. I demand it. Douglas. Jake, when I opened those letters and read that filth, I started to scream at him as if he could hear me. Oh my God, Jake, I should have known. Belle told me about his letters. She made a joke of it even called him my little crackpot. I never even looked at the letters. Now they've long since been thrown away and all we know is his first name, Douglas. Belle has tried and tried to remember his last name, but she can't. No, don't come. I'm fine, really. No more hysterics, no more breastfeeding, no more acting like a jackass. I'm not allowed to open my mail anymore until my detective, Stan, has seen it. So I'm much calmer. Jake, thanks for the flowers and the kind words. I'm off the respirator and well on my way back to the, my old annoying self. After rehearsal, Sal and Stan, her obedient detective, came to see me and I had the first real life I've had in a long time. I'm going crazy in this hospital. I'm threatening to flash everyone up and down the halls unless they let me out of here soon. I miss you, you big lug. And I know the diva wishes you were closer, even though she's doing a Tony award-winning job playing the role of the tough old broad. Kisses, bow. Oh, P.S. Ask Sal about her boy toy, David. He has been suspiciously missing and she won't give me any information. Dear Sally, I cannot endure this waiting, this, this uncertainty, this, this torture. Sally, the doubts that assail me at every turn and, and still no answer from you? If I do not hear from you, what recourse can I have but to think that you've been using me all the while to rid yourself of those you wished gone, with no real concern for me or my well-being? Dear Jake, well, your gal Sal is back again. It's glorious to be back in the harness and, as it seems, 
everyone worked miracles on the show in my absence. Maybe that's what they needed all along. Last night you asked about David and I hedged. It was too embarrassing to tell you on the phone. David, it turns out, is not precisely almost 30 years old. He's not even, oh God help me, of legal age. David is 20 years old. 20. Two. Oh. Oh, and not only is David just the size of puberty, he still goes to school. He's a history scholar and had to go back to Paris for the summer session. I am the portion of the horse that passes through the stable door last. If you're right, Belle, don't mention anything about David. I don't want her to know yet. She'll open her stitches yelling at me. YGS. Dear Sal, okay, that's it. Sally, you have lost. I'll be in New York on the 29th. As soon as I um, tie up some loose ends here, I don't want to hear another word about it. I warned you that I would not wait more than one day. And yet, you did not answer me. Don't deny me the chance to act the big shot, will you? Even Heidi thinks I should go. Love, Jake. Douglas. Dear Jake, let me try to explain to you calmly and rationally why I don't want you here. First, your place is with Heidi. Second, I am not alone. I have policemen constantly underfoot. Stan is here practically all the time, and Belle and all my friends and rehearsals and performances and too much to do to put up with you, my darling. So stay put. YGS. Hmm. I don't know whether to let life catch up with you or whether to take it into my own very capable hands. You must be taught a lesson. Of that, there can be no doubt. As you are doubtlessly know, I am very good at teaching lessons to persons whose nature is arrogant and self-centered. Oh, if you don't believe me, ask Belle Goldman. She will tell you something of how I deal with those who would hurt me. Douglas. Dear Belle, Sal tells me you're practically your old self again, thank God. I don't know what Sally would do without you and your level ahead to keep her on keel. Don't let her get to you as if that's remotely possible. Now, to be honest, do I need to come there? Would she feel better if I was around or would I just complicate things more? I trust your opinion. Say the word and I'll be on the next plane. Jake. Dear Jake. Well, the next time you see me, if I look like someone's great grandmother, don't be surprised. I just had 10 years added to my age from sheer fright. A few days ago, Stan told me not to leave the apartment without him. That did not set too well, I can tell you. Well, this morning I was sitting around waiting for Stan to get here and the worst thing happened. I ran out of cigarettes. Now, Jake, you know my powers of self-control. So, moron that I am, I thought I would take a quick trot around the corner and pick up a pack. So, uh, I disregarded the warnings of both Stan and the Surgeon General and left my apartment alone. After all, it was broad daylight. I wasn't going into a subway and the street was full of people. Well, darling, I got what was coming to me. As I came out of the grocery store, puffing away, thinking how brave I am, I saw him a young man standing at the corner and pretending not to look at me, but staring all the same. I clutched. Then I remember that lots of people stare at me. I'm a goddamn celebrity, right? So I puffed my way to the corner and turned west. Jake, he turned too. 
By the time I rounded the corner on 5th, I was practically in tears. Thank God the first sight I saw was Stan just going into the house. I ran to him, shrieking that the man was following me. Well, it turns out that young man who was following me was a plain clothes policeman. It seems I've been watched by the police for days now. Well, talk about your relief, your embarrassment, and you're almost breaking down and crying on the street. And then talk about your lectures. I never saw that side of stand before. Needless to say, I'm giving up smoking. I'm going to eat instead and get so fat that no one, no matter how deranged they are, will ever want my picture again. All right, I've used your shoulder enough for one day and I'm hideously late for rehearsal. Stan says he is going to carry me there in his pocket. Oh, would that he could. Love from an ever so slightly shaking ex-tobacco addict. Dear Sally, Sally, a word of warning from a friend. Gossip has it that there's a certain gift that's been sent to you. Open all of your packages carefully, if you know what I mean. I surely wouldn't want anything to happen to you, now would I? A former friend. Jake. She isn't driving me any more crazy than she usually does when a show is opening. And you know I have the magic touch in finding ways to calm her down. As for coming here, Stan has arranged 24-hour surveillance on the theater and the house. And there's a police officer who is annoyingly at my side every minute of the day. I don't think you could help and you really don't want to get caught up in the middle of this. She will be fine. All will be fine. If all the police protection doesn't scare this wacko off, Sal's extra large ass squeezed into her jeans should. What a time for her to quit smoking. Thanks for all your caring. I know Sal could not have gotten this far without you to support her. Sal. Dear bitch, I just realized a simply awful faux pas I unwittingly committed. I didn't get you an opening night gift. <laughs> now, hmm, what to get you? Hmm. They are doing such wonderful things with guns these days, or, or perhaps poison. Oh, fire is a lovely gift. Also knives. Oh, they're always in good taste, but oh, just so messy, don't you think? Ah, I have it. Just the thing. Gorgeous. By the time you receive this letter, you will have already received my special gift. I hope you like it. A former friend. Oh, Jake. It's all so loathsome, so degenerate. I don't know if I could hold out until it's over. But of course, you don't know what I'm talking about. I tried to call you, but was told you were away for the weekend. I went to the theater yesterday for the matinee, and when I went into my dressing room, oh God, it's so awesome. Someone had defecated and urinated all over the place. Not someone, him. Jake, the police have been lying to me all the time. His letters haven't been filled with love at all. Bell was only his first victim, now he's after me. Stan says, this is exactly what they want. That I'm constantly watched, and if he gets near me, they'll catch him. But why didn't they catch him yesterday in my dressing room? It's almost like he's an animal. If only we knew where he was. He still thinks I do. Oh, Jake, I'm frightened. I'm truly frightened. I truly am sorry to have killed your little detective, <laughs> but he left me no choice. He was always with you, you see, and I, and I had to show you that nothing can stop me. Why are they keeping it out of the papers? I 
suppose they have their reasons, Sally. <laughs> it was so simple. I merely waited on that low rooftop outside your apartment and awaited him. Simple. 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 It will, of course, be just as simple to kill you. Dear Jake. Soon, Sally. Sal's in terrible shape. Soon. I don't understand what's happening to her. Douglas. I know this is no picnic, but she's folding up like I never saw her before. My poor baby, she's taking so many pills. I told her to lay off that stuff, but she says she can't sleep. She also refuses to postpone that stinking show, even though the producer said he's willing. She keeps talking crap about always letting people down, and that's why this is all happening. She won't listen to reason. She looks like hell, and it's breaking my heart. All right, so now I'm upset enough for one day. All my love to you and Heidi, Belle. Your greatness. <laughs> now, how should we arrange it? You don't take the subway and you have more policemen surrounding you than ever. Hmm. Oh, I'll find a way. You know I will. A former friend. Dear Jake, everyone close to me is in peril. First Bell, now Stan. How could he shoot him in front of the hotel in broad daylight? and still get away? He's not human, Jake, he couldn't be. Stan could have lost his life. Thank God the bullet only hit his right leg. It's messed up pretty bad, but with time and therapy, they say he should be fine. I'm not allowed to leave the apartment now for rehearsals or anything. My life has been taken over. I'm gonna die, Jake. Oh, it's so terribly unfair. God, I wish I could see you one more time. They won't let you come. Don't even try. I want to sleep. I'll write you every day until it's over. Sal. Dear Sally, I see in today's paper that Bernadette Peters is playing your role in the previews of So I Bid Him. Why? Are you too frightened to pursue your own all-important career? I've never been very good at putting words together to express how I really feel, but now I've got to try. Sal, I'm afraid for you. Not only because of that man, but because it sound, sounds like you're giving up on yourself. That's not the Sally Ross I know and love. I wish to God I could help you, but I don't know what to do. Please don't give up. For me. You know I love you. And I always have. Jake. Dearest Sally. I have been wrong. Please call me. You know my address. I can't give out my phone number lest they read this letter. But you, you, you can look it up. Despite everything I have done and said, I still love you. You know I do. I, I, I won't harm you. I, I never would have. D do not be afraid. I will not implicate you either in the attack. The fact that you've not told the police where to find me leads me to think that you do care for me. For, for surely it can't be the fear that keeps you silent. I, I must be wrong. I am nothing without you in my life, Sally. If you don't forgive me, I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'll do. Douglas. Dearest Jake, I've come to a conclusion. The world is not meant for forevers. Just to have seen it, to experience the incredible grandeur of the world, even for a brief moment, is enough. I've come to understand so many things in the, things in the past few days, and they've made me contented. I love you, Jake. I've always loved you. I always will love you. You and Belle and the world. What a rich life I've had. And if it's over, well, then it's over. If he kills me today, 
know that my last thoughts were of you. Dear Sally, by the time you read this letter, I will be dead. I die willingly for the torment I have caused you. <laughs> I die happily because my death proves that I loved you as few men has ever loved before. I beg your forgiveness for all that I have done to cause you any pain. Goodbye, my Sally, my dearest, my love, your biggest fan. Dear Jake, I still can't believe it's over and that he's dead instead of me. Oh, Jake, I will get another chance, won't I? I'm so tired, my darling. So bitterly tired. Bell's with me now. I love you both so much. Sal, can I still be your gal after all of this? Dear Jake, when we found out that he killed himself, I never in my life knew what relief was until that moment. What a way to kill oneself. He poured gasoline all over himself and lit a match. And the letter he left Sal? All I can say is, thank God it's all over. My poor Sal, what she's been through. When we told her that he was dead, she just looked at us. First Stan and then me. Then she started to cry. Softly at first, like a baby, like, like a newborn. I held her in my arms and she cried like that. To tell you the truth, so did I. Yeah, the two old bags sat crying like babies and Stan stood there beaming like a moron. I like that one. He's my date for opening night, you know. Don't get excited, he's married. They say the show's in pretty good shape now and she ought to be able to take over in a week. So opening's been set for the week after next. She'll do it. Whatever happened to her, it's over now and she's coming around. She slept for 24 hours straight, no pills. I watched her sleeping like a baby, I swear. Oh, look who just came into the room fresh from her bath with a piece of Sara Lee in her hand. Hold on, I gotta smack her. Love, Belle. To the cast and crew of So I Bit Him, Following the opening night performance, Miss Sally Ross will be hosting a celebration at her apartment, 941 Fifth Avenue. Dear Jake, well, the opening is finally here. An hour and a half away. I can't believe how well previews have gone and that ending, they actually love it. I love you so much and it's so wonderful to be normal again. I'm still ashamed of how I behaved, but I'm so gloriously happy. Bella's screaming that we have to go. I'll finish the letter after the opening night party, and that's a promise. Have I mentioned I love you? Dear Sally, you will never read this letter, my darling. I'm writing it for the world so that they will know that a love such as ours existed. No, no, my darling, I am far from dead. That charred body was not mine. It, it was the body of a sacrificial lamb. <laughs> I regretted having to end his life, but what else could I do? How else could I assure those around you that there was no further need for them? How else could I assure that you would return to the show? For both are necessary. No, I shall not mail this letter. It will be found in the jacket pocket after you and I share the most intimate of love acts death. I shall be sitting in the first row at your opening night. The gun I will carry will unite us for all eternity. You will die as you lived in the glory and the glow of the spotlight, and I will die in the reflection of that glow. It's mere hours away now, Sally. Mere hours before no one and nothing can part us ever again. It's the same love that befell Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> like them, we shall live in the hearts and minds of men for all time. Douglas. Sal, 
By the time you receive this letter, I'll be somewhere over the Grand Canyon facing east. Look for me after the show Friday night. Heidi and I have decided to call it quits. I've got so much to say to you, Sal. I couldn't even start on the phone or else I would have broken down and cried. Which is why this letter, I do love you so. Truly. Look for me after the show, Jake.